Pain is a necessary part of life, but it doesn't have to mean what you think it does. This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my special guest is metaphysical teacher Guy Finley. It all starts right here, right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on KCAA Radio here in Southern California, Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast, and we're on UK Health Radio all weekend long. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, it's the Guys Guys Radio interview portion of our show, welcoming in our YouTube and Rumble viewers, as well as everybody listening around the world. My special guest today is Guy Finley, and today we're going to talk about pain. You know, regret, disappointment, betrayal, unrequited love, rage, guilt, feeling overwhelmed, being rushed, wanting revenge, the list goes on and on and on. My special guest, Guy Finley, is an internationally renowned spiritual teacher, best-selling author, founder of the and director of the Life of Learning Foundation, which is a nonprofit for a spiritual self-study located in Merlin, Oregon. He's a best-selling author of both author of the seminal book, The Secret of Letting Go, as well as 45 other books and audio programs that have sold over 2 million copies in 30 languages. Guy offers online classes every Wednesday evening and Sunday morning, and these classes are free to all and have been attended by thousands around the world. You can more, learn more about them at uh, guyfinley.org slash forward slash let go. And for more in, information about Guy Finley's work, links to the Life of Learning social platforms and their upcoming events, which we're going to get into today, because there's one about the topic we're going to discuss today. Just go to guyfinley.org. Welcome back to Guys Guys Radio, my friend and a teacher and mentor, Guy Finley. How are you, Guy? I'm good. Thank you, Robert. So today we're going to talk about pain. Um, interesting. How did you come up with this topic? It's very relevant, of course, because everybody's dealing with it every day. But what made you, inspired you to decide on pain? And what exactly is pain, by your definition, relevant to what we're going to talk about? <sighs> well... <laughs> <laughs> a big one at you right at the beginning well right? no it's good because i can hopefully encapsulate um what amounts to about well, i'm 75 so what 60 65 years of study since i started as a boy trying to understand the the disturbance in the force if you will this constant uh upheaval that all of children and all of us to one extent or another, continue to feel, only for me as a boy, raised in what would be considered a very affluent community, uh, it was so contradictory to me that there was so much conflict uh, between people and uh, in the most seemingly sublime circumstances uh, and unspoken suffering that was palpable to me. So my life began uh, with a question about that, and without going into details, around 12 or 13, I guess a few what you would call religious or mystical experiences that set me on the path of wanting to understand what in the name of God is all of this pain about. Because as Fenelon said, a stone beneath the surface of the earth weighs as much as one on the surface, and men and women have become masters of burying uh, this conflicted state, this secret despair, as Thoreau put it. And I, I want to know what it is. I want, And I'm still studying it all of these years. Do you think that uh, pain is an inescapable destiny for all mankind? And is it, is, it, is it unavoidable as part of our experience? Sounds like it. Here's the real issue. There is inherent in creation itself and you and I, however we view our relationship with the divine, you and I as a higher creation in the scheme of planetary things. In all of creation, there is built into its consistent new birth. It's in all rebirth. One of the factors is resistance. There is an active force, what is timeless, what is infinite, chaotic, 
constant, celestial in nature, pouring into literally the forms that that energy and light created so that there is a constant communication between the source of creation and the creation that was made from it. I hope that's not too uh, mm -hmm. ob obtuse. Light made the blade of grass. The blade of grass requires the light. They are in a constant reconciling relationship. In that relationship, there is resistance. No light touches any form that doesn't evoke in that form an instantaneous resistance. The simplest way to see it is that I look out here in the woods, I wouldn't see a thing if the forms here weren't reflecting a great portion of that light, even as they absorb other parts of it. So we see things because things resist the light that reveals them. But part of the light that reveals these things is taken into these things and used by these things, by matter, used by them to fuel and nourish and refurbish, recreate them so that life goes on and on and on. And resistance, meaning the passive response to something that acts on it, is infinite. That resistance cannot be escaped. Neither can the disturbance in the soul that registers that disturbance. Our problem, Robert, is that we don't understand that resistance may be inescapable, but the suffering inherent in it can be understood and turned into something that is profitable for the man or woman experiencing that instead of being uselessly squandered on trying to figure out how to escape something, we'll never escape because we are a creation. We are something that has a will acting on it incessantly. And our responsibility to that will is to enable the incarnation it intends and resistance. And if you want to use the word suffering is built into that rebirth. If I understand that, then I am a participant in that broader plan. If I don't, I fight tooth and nail with that pain and blame it on the world around me instead of seeing that that life is trying to give me a new understanding of myself and the world I walk through. Is this part of um, the, the challenge we have and our path and our journey to work with uh, kind of like God working through us to teach us lessons, if you will? Uh, I'll give you an example. I still remember when I was a kid, um, I didn't make the, I was very deserving and because of politics and parents of other kids and all that, I didn't make the all-star team in Little League. It really upset me because I knew it was, I knew it was political. And uh, of course, I haven't forgotten it. I was really, I was really, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Uh, and let so, it go, Robert, let so, it go. <laughs> no, well, I'll tell you why. Um, so this year with my son, he was in, uh, he really has come a long way in his uh, baseball. He had a great season. And then I found in this, what they do nowadays is they don't tell you if you didn't make the all-star team. They only tell you if you did. So I found out kind of serendip serendipitously um, that, uh, he didn't make it. And, um, and I think it was because the manager didn't really like me. And I felt horrible about it. And uh, for my son, because I thought he was very deserving. And I asked spirit, I said, why do I have to get this lesson again? And because I've also, I'm reading conversations with God from the beginning to the end, Neil Donald Walsh's book. And so I figured I can have conversations. If God is within me, I can talk inside myself. God is experiencing itself through me. So I said, what is my lesson here? What am I learning? And I was told, you are at a different level now. You are a, want to be a, you're a messenger for me. I'm experiencing myself, uh, my, myself through you. So the, you are, you, I want you to be a messenger of love. And you have to see this and have to experience this and have to know this that this is something you have to transcend. Like Guy just said, you have to get over this and uh, realize that, just, that those are like minor things. And like, if you had to handle the season differently, you may have handled it differently knowing what could have been as, as at stake for your son. And then I realized that God also told me, you can we can talk every day, all day, because I'm always listening. Is that kind of, uh, and thanks for listening to this guy, but is that kind of in the, 
ilk of what we're talking about, that I had to experience this and have it rubbed in my face again at the expense of somebody I really love because I wasn't listening. So the answer, Robert, is uh, yes and no. It's yes, because it's true that there can be an, and I won't use the word dialogue, because there can be an endless revelation of what it is within us that attracts and brings to us these lessons. The lessons are the evidence of unfinished business. End of story. Unfinished business me explaining to myself and even finding some consolation in the explanation I have for why the lesson has yet to be learned is not the learning of the lesson. The learning of the lesson is when I see without any doubt at all that whatever it is that I am experiencing in the moment doesn't need a description based on my past. What it requires is me being fully present to it so that I am participating in not the reasons I have for my pain, but the actual revelation of that moment of creation that's asking Robert, Robert, look, this happened, you're still carrying this with you. This infected or directed Mm -hmm. the conversations you had with the coach, you can't escape this conditioning. And yet Robert wants to still find a reason why that conditioning is there, which is part of the conditioning, keeping him from learning that Robert needs to die to Robert, not give Robert new life through an explanation that seems divine in origin. God never consoles a man for his pain by producing reasons why. The real consolation, Robert, is when I finally can see something so clearly. How about this? I'm speechless. I be, yeah, yeah, I become speechless. O-M-G, whoa, what 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 an idea that I can see something so clearly that I, I, I can't take thought because I realize thought is always superfluous to the suffering. Thought seems to explain the suffering. Thought is the continuation of the suffering produced by that nature that keeps trying to think its way out of its pain. It can't do it. You know, it's, it's, that's interesting because uh, I put total, if there is a blame, I put it all on myself, not on the coaches. They're just doing their thing. And uh, I have pretty good intuition and all of that. So I'm, I wasn't surprised at anything. I don't place any blame on that. I just feel that this was a lesson that I needed to learn. This was not about the team. This was not about the coaches. This is about, about my son, but my, seeing my son in a, un, he, doesn't, he doesn't even know, which is fine. But I just felt like I created the whole thing and I needed to learn about myself and about that pain to be able to relinquish it. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. But let's just add this, the one that I said, yes, but no. Mm-hmm. The part of me that wants to judge me is the creator of the problem being judged. The part of me that wants to judge me is in fact the creator of that conflict that I'm sitting there judging myself and the world for putting me in. Judgment, as Christ said, judge not that you be not judged, is is a way in which this self believes that it's different than the nature that's doing the judging. So if I judge myself, I can't be completely the one who should be speechless. I still have a little left to say. <laughs> so for, for, for the reason I bring this up, because it's a um, it's a practical situation that we've all been in. Like yes. we get to similar situation comes up in life and we say, why? Like somebody, maybe it's a relationship. I got the same type of partner again. Why is that? So to me, this was a situation came up again that I hadn't let go of. So in practical terms, you know, I know you're being very logical here, but for people out there who are like, they can't, they, 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 you know, they, they're reaching to think that through the logic because it is yes. at a philosophical, and, spiritual and, and level. The, what, is the, the best, what is the- That's the best we can do. Mm-hmm. But at some point we have to, look, you know this, 
at some point I have to see that the best I can do, don't do it. <laughs> end of story. And that's what we're terrified of is the end of my explanation. You can't explain to you this unconscious nature that carries over all of these unresolved conditions in itself mm -hmm. and the resistance to what is unresolved, this unfinished business is the continuation of that business. So you've heard the expression uh, uh, in Star Trek, resistance is futile. So the, you wrote the book about letting go, the, the secret of letting go. So in situations like this, day-to-day -day stuff that we all run into, how do we let go? Okay. Because I think that's what, you know, we're, we're talking about pain and it all comes back to your book and your philosophy about learning how to let go. So how do we let go? I mean, my thing, I, in this situation, I spoke to spirit and spirit said, I'm inside you. I'm part of you. We're always having a conversation. Open up. Talk to me. I'm working. I'm experiencing myself through you. And I want you to be this and not in like it wasn't words, but telling me the knowing that I have a different role. And my role is to be be more godlike in that, be more loving, and just be more loving. And I said, okay, I, I get it. And I think it's okay to have these conversations with God. Talk to me, Guy. So, Guy so, Finley, our special guest on Guys Guys Radio, internationally okay. renowned spiritual teacher, best-selling author. We're talking about pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I was just thinking about this. This morning, Robert, I'm, I, I speak, as you said, a couple, three times a week for nothing, all over. So here I am, and I'm Robert. I'm in earnest. There's no question about it. Been a seeker for whatever number of years in my life I've been a seeker. I want to know something I say about the divine, but really what I want to know about is why in the hell am I still in pain after all these years? Exactly. Look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. I'm recognized somehow socially as an authority of some kind, uh, even though inwardly one day you'll laugh at all of that, how absurd to even want to be seen as anything at all. <laughs> and so I, 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 so I have this meditation and I feel like there's a consultation and I feel some consolation in that moment. And for that moment, I am identified with this idea because I can feel it, and it's a true idea, I need to be another kind of man, another kind of woman, someone who isn't aggressive with people that don't agree with me, because I see that fighting never invokes the light. It keeps everything, all of us, in the dark. And, but then I have to see, Robert, that I, 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 leave, this, uh, I leave this moment of sensitivity, of quietness, and I'm back on the phone or I watch a baseball game on TV and in a heartbeat, the me that should be loving is meeting the me that hates anything that challenges its idea of what love is, of how things should be. So that consciousness, Robert, is in endless conflict. The conflict is not with the coach. It's not with what happened to Robert 50 years ago or whatever time it was. The conflict is that it lives with an unseen set of demands based on incomplete experience in the past that it carries over. I was heartbroken when I was 17 years old. I fell hard in love. It took 30 years before I realized that that conditioning that said, I'm never going to be hurt again, went with me into every relationship that I ever knew. So that I was always looking through a jealous eye with the other eye seeing the possibility of an endless love, they don't go together. Jealousy destroys love. So a man begins to recognize that I am and want to be a better man. What does St. Paul say? I don't do the good I would, I do the evil I would not. He was referring to this incessant inherent division in an unconscious nature that knows what is true but can't do what is true because what is untrue continues to live out his life, coming up with new ideas about who I should be, even 
and, and I'm not implying anything, but inventing certain things in imagination that are momentarily comforting, failing to see that the momentary comfort of some consoling thought is just that. It's like a drug. And I need to be, I need to get over the addiction that I have to wanting to explain to myself this pain so that I can enter into the moment itself of that pain and start to realize the real workings in this unconscious nature that is driving those dark thoughts and feelings. And in that revelation is, is liberation. Revelation is liberation. So we don't want to judge ourselves and we don't want to judge others. And what can, and when these feelings come up, a situation comes up, uh, every day we run into what do conflict. I do? What do I do? Exactly. For, for our listeners and audience, I get it. From, I get it. you know, everybody, we all, of course. we all encounter not only new things, but we encounter replays of the past. And sometimes, many times, it's situations that we haven't fully processed, if you will, the right way and let go. I'm, I'm learning this through, you know, I started studying TM about three months ago. I was gifted a, a sponsored through it through the uh, some folks at the David Lynch Foundation, and I've done a hundred days in a row. And what's happened with me is it's, I've released so much, so many, when I go into my 20 minute transcending, so many issues from my past, it was almost like remote viewing where I've gone into situations that I have lived and things came up and they kind of floated up and have been processed. Th this has been great for me. But I, you know, for everybody, for every everybody needs to go through some type of processing. But how do they do that? Because it's not that easy to be able to take the deep dive. You know, I'm I'm like trained now in meditation. For most people who don't meditate, you're gonna we're gonna run into stuff all the time. We live in a chaotic, conflicting, conflicting world. What can people do when this stuff comes up in front of them each and every day? Whether it's something that they are they created, they are seeing again, or something new. So I have an exercise, a simple one. Okay. But before I share this exercise, it's critical that we understand, if you will, one thing. I am in a ceaseless relationship with all of these impressions. The news, the politic, the, the wish to be this kind of man, the discovery that I'm not. I am, I am the intersection of a host of interacting forces. We can understand that. It's what creation yes. is. Yes. I am that. But we all have this tendency to take what comes in and to want to know what it is that just happened to us. As if we can know what happened to us. This is the stunning discovery at some point down the road for everyone who walks the inner path. You don't know what happened. That's the most ludicrous thing a human being can believe. But for the longest time, I'm, I'm adamant. Jesus, I have to know. Because if I don't know, then I can't control. If I don't know, I don't know the path. And so in that mind is built in this, uh, this certainty that there's danger in not knowing. I'm saying that you can't know. I'm saying that you and I are, are, are similar to the ocean into which comes the rain, the streams, the rivers, the rocks, the sticks, all of this coming in. Imagine how ludicrous it would be to think that at one moment you could know in thought everything that's moving you everywhere that you are. Now, this may be too subtle, I hope not, but this, our true nature is a field. Our, my, the divine is a, a living field of energy and awareness 
that never stops interacting with itself, stirring itself, disturbing itself for the purpose of continually bringing itself back into the initial balance that it is. Now, I'm sitting here and Robert said something that bugged me. God, well, how am I going to? And, and all of a sudden, I'm out of the hole and into the particular. Separation, right? Instantaneously. Now, who, what is it that believes that the particular is better than the whole? Other than the part of me that's scared of not knowing itself as it knows itself through thought because it can't know its conventional conditioned self in the whole. It can only participate in it. So the task is this gradual revelation that I'm not here to have this power over the moment that my mind tells me I need to when I'm in pain. I'm here to participate in the unending revelation of a divine nature that doesn't need power to overcome anything because it is itself constantly interacting with itself. And that's what real life is. Now, having said that, here's the exercise. At some point, remember I said you have to become speechless? Yes. So what does that mean? At some point, my mind, boy, it wants to engage. It, that's what it does. We have an unconscious reaction, a reactive memory, because that's what all reactions are. There is no reaction without memory. End of story. Reaction and memory are synonymous, cellularly, atomic, across the board. Memory, reaction, one thing. I have this reaction, and the first thing that happens is I start listening to myself talk to myself. <laughs> I, I literally, I'm, I'm joined by myself. OMG, how can I be joined by myself if I am myself? So fracture, division, separation, a mind that wants to figure out why it's disturbed when the reason it's disturbed is because it came into that moment having seemingly resolved all the other disturbances in its past, and it hasn't. It can't. Thought can't end thought. So exercise. Another word for speechless would be stop, drop, endure. Stop, drop, endure. Stop what? Stop right where I am, as I am, and understand something wants to keep me moving. Moving meaning what? Thinking through what this pain is. That's what it wants. You can't stop here, guy. Too much is unknown. You got to dive in and deliver yourself from this pain. You can't deliver yourself from your pain. It's impossible. But by coming to a stop, I can begin to experience the momentum of this chattering mind. And as I begin to experience the fact that nothing in me wants to come to a stop. Can you see the, here I am, I'm, I'm coming along a road and suddenly there's a cliff or a snake. Isn't it intelligence to come to a complete stop and have a full assessment of my circumstance? Yes? Of course. All right, come stop. Now, the next part is drop. Well, drop what? Everything that wants to engage me in a conversation about how you can't stop here. <laughs> you gotta, you got to sort this out, baby. Because if you don't sort it out, then the suffering that you're experiencing is never going to go away. But you've seen enough going into that moment to realize that the suffering you're experiencing is because something in you believes it can make your suffering go away because it's been fully conditioned to believe that whatever it is you're suffering is yours and yours alone, and it's up to you to bring an end to it through some strange thought process or spiritual discipline or whatever it is that we do. So I, I drop, I drop, I drop, I drop. I, I become a thought watcher instead of a thought catcher. As I watch, as I witness, instead of participating in the process of pain, then I begin to have to do something I've never done before. 
What's the last of the part of that exercise, Robert? Do you remember? Stop, drop, and endure. endure. Oh no, endure. <laughs> endure. Don't you know I've what I've had to endure? My children, my wife, my husband, this business, this world. I've endured too much. I don't want to endure anymore. It is as a person begins to understand what stop and drop means that they start to understand the only thing that you have mistakenly endured is your own resistance to the revelation of yourself. That's it. So I learned to live with what I never was able to live with before. Now I'll use another word besides endure. The root meaning of the word patience, Robert, is stunning. It means to suffer yourself. That's the meaning of the word patience, to suffer oneself. I'm impatient with the moment. I'm impatient with my wife, with my children, with the people at work. I'm impatient with the news. I'm impatient with my finances. I'm impatient with my health. Why? Because I know already how it's supposed to be. So impatience doesn't prove that you know what you think you do. Impatience proves you don't know anything. So it sounds Otherwise, like it sounds like I, the the key here. What I'm taking away for the for our audience and for myself yes. is witnessing versus reacting, responding versus reacting, but not responding in a way that's conflictive, but responding by witnessing and understanding that you're not not to judge others, not to judge yourself, and let let things go as best you can and not get involved because if you start overthinking everything we the boils down to we really don't know anything so how can we get up how yes. can we get upset when we really don't understand you know, the fund the fundamentals so if we can That's start it. there so when situations come up instead of reacting we want to witness we want to look at it from the fact that i don't want to you don't want to think about it but you don't want to get sucked in to pouring <laughs> gasoline on the fire, if you will. I call it seeing without selfing. Okay. Seeing without selfing. The, the, the minute the mind thought becomes engaged with what that same mind has pointed to, to blame for the pain, you're finished with that lesson. Unless you have come into that moment with an intention to see thought as it starts to get engaged. Because now you know, I, I know I get it, what he said, stop, drop, and be patient, suffer myself instead of causing others to suffer or blaming others for it. And oh my God, I can't stop. Mother of pearl, my mind won't stop. Because the gotta, gotta, gotta type of thinking. And uh, my, my question though is the, the well, you, you know the enduring the when we're enduring guy when we're yeah. enduring pain we don't want people to hold everything inside and Correct. kind of melt themselves away because that can make you that can make you ill so it's not about enduring like just take it right it's not Absolutely. really about that no. it's only about that philosophically if we realize that there is no meaning to any of this so why take it seriously because now you're creating it through your thought yes there is meaning but not the meaning that the mind ascribes to it. Okay, help That's, us with that. To be very clear. So Please. when I come, look, first I need new understanding. This is what we're looking at. Okay, so I kind of understand a little bit of this, that this pain can't be separated from my resistance to this moment. So the moment didn't create the resistance. I came into the moment with an incomplete understanding that the moment is trying to reveal to me so that it can be completed and then I can literally be free because I've, I'm, I've, I've completed that lesson in quotes. So the moment that my mind starts to take thought, if I go into the moment realizing that thought isn't the solution but part of the suffering, now I have a ground in quotes from which to observe what I could never see before and that's this. And I said it before, oh my God, I can't stop thinking. <laughs> that's now, so true it, in our culture right yes yeah, so, so if i'm the one who agrees to think then i should be able to say no more thinking for at least two minutes shouldn't i 
So why do I need some meditative process? Why do I have to try to hypnotize or ground myself in some image of the divine? Why, if I'm thinking, I can stop thinking. You discover that it's not you thinking and you have put your foot on the path to separating the wheat from the chaff, from discovering that all of the images that you and I hold of ourselves, every last one of them is full of air because the image doesn't exist without the thought that keeps in place the conditions and that consciousness. It all begins to collapse. We, we call it the collapse of the haunted house. The whole thing is raised. And when it falls to the ground, as it's falling, because we're willing to go through that, what is rising up through that is this true witness, is the true observer who understands that resistance is futile. It doesn't mean I don't feel it. It just means I understand I mustn't fight with this moment, I must enlighten the moment by bringing it into the awareness of myself. So is my special guest on Guys Guys Radio, the amazing spiritual teacher, best-selling author, Guy Finley. We're talking about pain. Is it, Guy, about ultimately finding out, revealing who we are, who we truly are, versus the thinking that keeps perpetuating a lot of these falsehoods of things that we conjure up in our mind? And is that a, as a result of the culture we live in, which is this gotta, gotta, gotta culture, uh, and we just keep being put in situations where we have to react all the time. We have to react. We get this, we get this with junk mail, bills, this, that. We always have, are rectifying things. Is, is that, I mean, are we being, this type of uh, dysfunction, is this being per perpetrated by our culture? Our culture cannot be separated from the consciousness that created it. Our culture cannot be separated from the consciousness that created it. So how can I blame my culture for my confusion if my confusion has created a culture that has endless answers and laws to resolve the chaos in it? This is why we need this new understanding and to enter into it all the time, to live in this meditation that recognizes the observer is the observed. This pain that I don't want doesn't exist without me that doesn't want it. But there is a pain. Can it serve a different purpose? That's the whole of it. That's what I'm going to talk about. That's what I always talk about, especially in the upcoming talks in June. Does this pain serve any purpose other than to prove to me that life done me wrong, that I didn't get the break, that I'm less than everyone else, can it prove to me something that cannot be seen by thought, but that can bring about a new perfect relationship with creation itself? Because it gets deep. Look, this is deep stuff, Rob. And I appreciate you bringing me back, bringing me back, so that we can get some concrete points. You won't have a better exercise than stop, drop, and endure, because if you even attempt it, you're going to be shocked. The yeah, shock is healthy, not unhealthy. Well, thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, give you a little bit of pushback in terms of, uh, I want it to be a practical discussion for our, for everybody out there. And you, you are brilliant and you speak at a level that really have to, you know, spirituality requires some type of muscles. It really does. It's, it's mathematical in a way. And in other ways, it's, it's not that easy. If you really read a good spiritual text or listen to a teacher like yourself, it, it, it expands, but it's not necessarily easy to do at first. So what I want to do is bring back, bring things back into the practicality to help our audience with the day-to-day -day stuff that we run into, because this is exactly what we face each and every day. So Guy, tell us about, you have an upcoming uh, um, seminar, workshop uh, about this particular subject. Yes. Thank you, Robert. Twice a year, my foundation in Southern Oregon opens that it's always has its doors open to everyone. There's nothing to join, no cost, $3 donation at the door, nothing. But twice a year, we have these big events where over a period of really five days, but three day weekend, there's a series of four or five talks, a meditation, a banquet, usually some entertainment where students from all over the world come in and we dig really deeply into these ideas. And the, the main thing that we're gonna look at in June, right about the solstice, around the 21st of June through the 24th, is this idea is that, is there, is there really another world within the world that I live in? Is there really another order of myself 
that I can begin to understand that entering into that new order of myself, I enter into another life, another relationship with life that doesn't have in it the useless suffering, but rather something that is constantly being used to deepen my relationship with this new order, this divine order of oneself. Sounds fantastic. Where can people find out more about it and sign up for it? And what are the dates again? It's June the 21st. Let me get this out because I don't, you know me, I don't know stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's June the 21st Okay. Uh, through the 24th, Friday through Sunday. And uh, it's going to be held at the foundation. And if you want to find out about it, you can go to guyfinley.org forward slash online. GuyFinley.org forward slash online, or just look, you know what, by the grace of the, the kindness of my students, I'm fairly ubiquitous all over the web. Just look me up, follow the trail back to my website. You can get a free book if you go to GuyFinley.org and spend 20 years just going through the free material. Can, Guy can, uh, can, they, can they attend virtually or do you have to physically go? Thank you, thank you for that. Yes, uh, it's attended virtually. Uh, you can watch the talks, they're, they're downloaded, you can revisit them. Uh, there's some kind of special package the kids put together where you get the whole uh, mishmagosh um, and some other bonuses for like $10 or something like that. I don't know what it is. Nothing really, kind of like a PBS special. Make a donation, get something. That's well, about guy, it. Guy, you do great work. You've been on the show a number of times. It's always a, a different, incredibly revealing conversation. And one of the things I admire about you is that um, you're so generous with your time and with your material. You really, you are walking the walk because a lot of the folks who are in the kind of spiritual metaphysical space these days, as it continues to grow, there's a lot of money being exchanged and everybody's got to make a living and that's understandable. You are coming at it from the heart. You've been doing this for years. You have a very um, developed message and uh for me, you're a teacher, you're a friend, you're a mentor, and um, I love our conversations and uh, hopefully our audience, I'm sure they love it also. So thank you so much for being back on the show. We'll see you again soon. And in the meantime, everybody check out Guy's work and you're gonna learn a lot. Thank you, my friend. And I thank you, Robert, very much. If you enjoy the guests and content I bring you each and every week to Guys Guys TV and Guys Guys Radio, please support us by subscribing to our channels and platforms. Thank you.